Welcome to the World According to Christy podcast. This show will motivate you, inspire you, and give you tools to activate your goals and dreams, whether those dreams are entrepreneurial, corporate, or personal. Hello, and welcome to the World According to Christy podcast. I am Christy Demetrakis, your host and author of Faith to Conquer Fear, Inspiration to Achieve Your Dreams, and Amazon bestseller, Faith to Conquer Fear, The Journey. I am so excited that you have chosen to join me today for this episode. If you have watched any of my previous, watched or listened to any of my previous podcasts uh, or watched my episode zero trailer, you know that I share a variety of different things. Some weeks you will hear me pontificating and talking about anything that appeals to me that week. Other weeks you'll hear me, you'll hear from some of my old friends from my vintage Face to Conquer Fear and Sell Your Message radio shows. And then there's other weeks where you hear from some of my new friends. And that's what we're doing this week. This week, I'd like to introduce you to my special guest, Jackie Collins. And Jackie is the CEO of Three Digits LLC. She operates as a subject matter expert and a leading authority on credit education. If you've ever been puzzled by how to acquire the lowest interest rates on credit cards to get approved for the home of your dreams, to secure financing for your business, to leverage the power or to use credit cards in securing the greatest FICO score, or to get the best deal on a brand new vehicle, I'm glad you're listening to this episode. So whether you're new to the credit game or you've had many years of experience managing your credit, Jackie's new book, It's All About the Three Digits, can change the way you think and help you to achieve the credit score you desire. Jackie, welcome to the World According to Christy podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Christy. I'm really excited to be here. I am so glad you are here. Well, you know what, before we jump into what I know everybody wants to talk about, because the minute I said credit scores, people thought money, help, right? right. <laughs> so before we get into that, I want you to tell people a little bit about you, your background, your family. Yes. Well, I am married. I've been married for 31 years. I have two daughters. One is 19 and one is 25. And a Pekingese poodle who's the love of my life. So, um... I think my background is a little interesting because prior um, to me working in the credit industry, or excuse me, since working in the credit industry, I transitioned to actually being a social worker and a therapist. I worked in the credit industry for 15 plus years and learned a whole lot about the credit system. And so now I actually am a social worker and a therapist. However, I am, again, working um, a lot of my time in the area of credit. Credit education is a big, big area. You know, just helping people to understand what credit is, how it's to be used, and not abused. Oh, that's such a good topic, and it's such a, a relevant topic. I remember, and we're going to get into this, but I remember when my husband and I got married, my mom, great credit. And she always raised me with this mentality of credit is important. Paying your bills is important. Paying things on time is important. And my husband did not have the same philosophy. So I spent a lot of my time, and I know you have some examples of this as well that we'll get into, but I spent a lot of time helping my husband correct his credit score. So Mm -hmm. this is a perfect, perfect topic. And you are so passionate about this topic that you just wrote a new book. Tell us about the new book. Well, my new book is, it's all about the three digits, and it is exactly what it says. With the credit system, it's all about the three digits that you have, and your credit score is three digits, and that's all that matters. Anything else, it does not make any difference. The credit system does not look at anything other than that score, what's happened in your life, what problems you've had, if you got laid off, none of that matters. It's all about the three digits. And that's the truth. What's a, that's a great title, and that's, that makes so much sense. Yes. How did you say it like that? Because it really does come down to credit. And I know I have excellent credit. I'm proud to say I have excellent credit. 
but I always still look at the back page of my Discover card bill because they have that the credit score just written, you know, on there that comes every week. And whenever I see a dip like four points, I'm like, hold on now, what happened? <laughs> what happened this last month? Yeah. But I'm sure there's some variation in there. But awesome. Well, I am excited to talk this topic because I know that it is important for everybody. So yeah. the first question I'm going to ask because I know that there are people on probably both ends of the spectrum. Is it possible to repair? terrible credit. We're going to start with that. Is it possible to repair it? Absolutely. And you know what? That word repair is an interesting word because you have many people out here that do credit repair, but so many aren't educating. It doesn't mean a whole lot just to simply repair but not understand what's been done. So you can go somewhere and an agency or organization can help you to repair your credit, but you know nothing after that. And you don't understand what you need to do in order to keep you out of whatever it was that got you there. So my whole premise is credit education equals credit restoration. So an educated consumer can repair their own credit or can restore their own credit. So it definitely is possible with time and with effort. It can be done. I love the difference. What a, what a great nuance, repairing versus restoring. Because you're exactly right. It's, it is that education. It's the habit, right? Because there was some habit, that some bad habit that got you in the place of negative credit or bad credit to start. We can't have negative credit, but, but bad credit to start with. And so I love that. So how do you help people with that, what, what it takes to restore the credit? Right. My book gives you a wealth of information on how to restore your credit. That's one way. Another way is I do credit report review and consultation. So what that would um, entail is I would speak to a person and they would provide for me this credit bureau. And I will go through the credit bureaus and I will review the credit report to see what things in there are negative, things that seem to be problematic. They may know some of this and they may not. Sometimes people can um, go over a lot of things that um, are actually in the report. And just because you don't understand, you don't know really what you're looking at. So I educate them on really what the credit report is saying to them. And then I will give them a roadmap on steps that they can take in order to change their credit situation. So it's really kind of um, an inclusive thing. What I actually do is I do pre-work before I actually talk to the person. So we'll do something like a Zoom call. And so prior to that, I would get their credit report and I would go through the review on the report, and this is while I'm not talking to them, and we'd have a scheduled time, whereas we would come together, and I would talk about the things that are on their credit report. So really, I'm doing a lot of work prior to actually talking to them, so the conversation is not really long and drawn out. I'm going to talk to them and tell them this is what I've seen, you know, and talk to them mm -hmm. about what things that they, it may be some things that they know they might see, um, have seen some issues on their credit report. And they may say, well, that's not correct. That's not true. I wasn't past due at that particular time. And so then I would explain to them how you can dispute information that's on your credit report, which is a real biggie. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, well, that's a great service. So if you think about people who um, are maybe their credit is not exactly where they want it, and a lot of people find out that their credit is not where it needs to be when they go to make a home purchase or they go to buy their first car, right? That's when you go, oh, what do you mean my score is, and is that good or is that bad, right? Because they're probably not really paying a whole lot of attention to it. Right. So in those moments, what can people do quickly? And I know building credit takes time and losing credit is, it takes a lot less time. <laughs> <laughs> reversing it takes a lot less time. But what can people do quickly in those instances where they like they're ready to buy a new home or they're ready to buy a car or, and all of a sudden they realize, ooh, this is not good. Right. Now I'm gonna have to say sometimes not be a quick quick fix. Well, hold on, hold on just a second, Jackie. 
I have a, a model a second, that puts the base. Oh, oh your your uh, our volume is going out just a little bit. Our um, so let's say what you start the answer to that question again because we were losing you a little bit on the audio. Oh, okay. Well, I actually tell people that it's not always a quick fix. People want that quick fix because oftentimes they're in shock, sheer shock, when they go to purchase a car or to purchase a home, and they're like, what can I do? But the quickest thing that they can do is the review of their credit report. So often there are things on their report that are not valid, that are not correct. And oftentimes people don't keep up with their credit report so they don't know what's on their report. I mean, the percentage of incorrect things on people's credit report is huge. It is a huge number and people will be so surprised. So just getting a delinquency off of a credit report can push your score up a major amount. Depending on what you want, it could be 50 plus or so that will actually be raised on your report, which can make a dramatic difference. But one of the big things I say is that credit restoration is a marathon and not a sprint. Okay? So you'll have many organizations out there that will say it's a quick fix, but it depends upon what you're doing. Oftentimes, mm. you may go to agencies that will say that they'll help you, but they will get things off of your report, but they could end up coming back on if they're not legitimately taken off. So it's a whole process that needs to take place in order to make sure that it is legitimately taken off. Mm -hmm. But it's a process that's worth doing, right? I mean, as you said, it's all about the three digits. Everything, everything you want to own is going to come down to a credit score. So let me, I, what I should have done at the very beginning is really calibrate people on what is a uh, poor credit score. I won't say bad, a poor credit score. What are the ranges of credit scores? Right. If you, I mean, in the 500s, you're definitely very poor credit. Okay, um, lower 600, that's not so great. We start getting into um, the mid 600, it's considered a fair. Mid to 600 to a little upper. But then when you start getting into the 700s, you start to do pretty well, where a wider range of credit opportunities will become available to you. Now, with those low scores, you often can get credit, but it's going to be at a much higher interest rate. And that's the key. High that's interest the key. means money, right? It means paying more money. That's not what you want to do. And so lots of people that get um, things, cars and homes, but their interest rate is out of this world. So therefore, their payment is very high. So sometimes it's not even a situation that's good. You know, you may want mm -hmm. something, but in most cases, it's not good to even venture into that until your credit score is at at least a good level. And good is the 700. Now, when you start getting to the um, point where you can get whatever you want, that's when you get above 750, okay? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. okay. About at 760, you're royal. And here's the interesting thing. I say to people, I would not stress myself out trying to get to eight and 850 because the same thing somebody can get in the 800, you can get a 760. So I think that's- Oh, what? What? Yes. 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 Oh, because you just bursted all my bubbles. You just yes. burst. <laughs> I was feeling like royalty. I'm like, yes. Yes. Oh, what? I mean, but it's, it, it still is wonderful if you've gotten to that point because you're really in a minority when you are in the 800s. But I'm just saying, for people to just stress so much, and many people do, they thought, I gotta get to 850, I have to get to 850, but not necessarily to get to that interest rate. So what is, I know we see a lot of commercials or ads for um, businesses, or it's not even businesses, but play, ways to, to check your credit score, keep on top of your credit score. Right. So I wanna talk about what do you think are good tools for people to be able to check their credit score on a regular basis that doesn't, and then is there, is it a myth or truth that checking your credit score a lot will actually lower your credit score? So I asked you two questions. Right. It depends upon where you're um, checking it. 
Okay, if you're checking it through um, a major rec reporting agency, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, those type of systems are not going to cause you to actually have a reduced um, score. Okay, so checking your credit report through just many of these companies that you just see out here, random companies, they check your credit report for free. It's not always, yeah, you may not pay money, but you're going to pay with your score. So I um, suggest that the FICO system be used. FICO.com, that's a good system. Also, like you said, Discover. Discover has a system where anybody can get a credit score from them. And also, I want to say all credit scores are not alike, okay? So some of these credit scores that you'll get out here for free, they're not your FICO score. And that's what you really want to look at. You have a FICO score and you have a Vantage score. FICO scores are used by 90% of lenders. Vantage mm -hmm. scores are used by 10% of lenders. So although Vantage scores are important, FICO scores are most important, obviously, since 90% are with that system. So what a FICO score, first and foremost, because that's what most lenders are going to use. So if you're looking at credit monitoring services, there's a lot of them out there, and Discover has a really good one. Mm -hmm. And so the Discover, you can use that whether you're a Discover card member or not? That's right, oh. which is a really good thing. You know, it is. Right. There's a Credit Karma. There's, um, uh, what is it, My Wallet. There, there's quite a few. Mm -hmm. I think you just look for credit monitoring services. But again, you want to look at what credit scores they actually give you. And so you really want to use each two of your credit scores. And the Experian and Equifax are the FICO scores. TransUnion uses the Vantage scores, but they all come together. All of them are important. So you don't want to just throw one out, say like the Vantage. You don't want to throw it out. But again, about the fact that only 10% use that, then you mm -hmm. want to look really, really strongly at that FICO score. So myfico.com is a really, really good tool also. And that's, that can give you all your credit reports. Okay, that's excellent. That's excellent. So if people think about, let's again assume people maybe in that 600 range, let's give them grace and say they're in the 600 range, yeah. and they know they have to improve these scores. I want to buy a house. I want to be able to buy a car and not pay triple the interest that I should pay just because I have poor credit history. Right. What are the things, two questions again, what are the things that truly drive negative credit history, and then what are the, call it, two or three things that people need to immediately start doing that would probably make the biggest difference the quickest, I know it's a marathon, but in improving their credit scores? Right. I think your question is, will be combined with the answer I'm going to give you now. Okay. So what's most important is negative credit history. It, it doesn't matter if you've been delinked with one time. It's going to have an extreme effect on your credit score. So you want to make sure that you're not delinquent. Now, just to get the delinquencies off, there are systems out there where people, you know, work with getting delinquency off of your credit report. Whether or not that's um, so ethical, you know, that's for one to look at. You know, mm -hmm. But in all actuality, if you have negative items on your credit report, that is going to push your credit down. So you want to make sure that you don't have the delinquencies. If, in fact, you think delinquencies are not valid and they're inaccurate, then you need to dispute those. So that's one of the big things is to dispute items on your credit report that you don't feel are valid. The other thing is keeping, if you have credit cards, Keeping those balances low. The system mm -hmm. says the low 30%, but in all actuality, to have the greatest credit score, 10% of your available credit is what the system wants to see. Because what oh, they wow. don't, right, and that's not very much if you don't have very much credit, right? Mm -hmm. so right. 
if you had a thousand dollar credit score, then that means, excuse me, a thousand dollar credit limit, that means you could only use one hundred dollars in order to have a ten percent, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. they don't really get that. that. That's so important. They think because I have the credit available, I can use it. Sure, you can use it, but it's going to cause your score to dip. So if you can keep mm -hmm. that score down as low as possible, definitely thirty percent and low, you will definitely we see your score increase by simply doing that. And um and also just even if you have installment loans, credit cards are one of the biggies. But even installment loans, which an installment loan would be like a um a car loan, a home mm, okay. loan, mm -hmm. any of those, you want to make sure that those are paid on a consistent basis, although those um, initially don't have as great of an effect as the credit cards, but if and ever you were to become delinquent, then that's going to dip your score. So the biggest thing is making sure that you keep your balances low, you make sure you don't have delinquencies, and also the other thing, just paying on time every month. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. month, I'll fail. You must pay on time. So even here's another trick. Sometimes a person might think, okay, my due date is the 15th of the month. I can't make it on the 15th of the month, so I'll just pay it next month. I'll double up. No, no, no. That's going to give you a 30-day delinquency. You'd be, mm. be better off making the payment late and paying it late. See, say I can't pay it until the 25th. Well, at least I paid it that month, and it's not going to roll over to another month. So, therefore, at least you will not show a 30-day delinquency. You'll have, again a, a um, late fee, but what's a late fee when it compares to having a 30-day delinquency, which is long, mm, okay. long credit, you know, so much. Mm -hmm. so important. And when do, so I know uh, college students, you know, credit card companies love to give credit cards to college students. That, that was so, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never did it. I never did it. But I have to say, I did encourage our daughter because she's now in medical school so I encouraged her a year ago to get a credit card. She's very good with money, though, so I knew this wasn't a risk. Um, to get a credit card to start to establish some credit history, because I knew she was going to have to take out loans for medical school. Yes. I'm interested in your thought process around that. Okay. In regards to students and, and credit cards, and if I could just um, give a little information about myself, how I actually even came to this. When I was 18 years old, on the campus of Wayne State University, I'm walking in the commons area, and I see these tables out. And people are out there. They have mugs, and they have sweatshirts and T-shirts. Yeah. And like, oh, what are they doing? So I go over, and I look, what, so what's going on? Oh, these are um, credit cards for these different organizations, right? And I was not, I didn't have a great understanding of credit at 18. My mother never used credit cards, so I didn't really know. Um, I, of course, I heard of them, but I didn't really know about them. So I'm talking to the representative um, at one particular table, and she told me, oh, okay, you can get this card and be able to use it and buy things and then just pay on a monthly basis. And I'm like, oh, wow, that sounds pretty cool. I could do that. I have a job. I can make the payments, right? So I get a credit card. I, I was approved. I signed up. I was approved for this credit card. It was a company uh, um, store like a Nordstrom, and this is in Michigan, right? So I just was having the time of my life because it was everything in there that I could get. So then I began to get credit cards after credit cards after credit cards because I didn't really get it. However, the key is I always made the payments. Because my mother always told me it's important to pay your bills, right? Although I was getting all the credit cards, I would pay the bills. But of course, when you pay the bills, then you keep getting more credit cards. And yes, I you did, do. I did not say no to any of them. So I would say by the time <laughs> I was like 23, and I had about 10 credit cards at that point. 10 credit cards. And I. Just went crazy. Wow. Absolutely crazy. And so that's what got me to a point to come to this after I came to myself later mm -hmm. in life. 
Later in life, it took me some time to mature, and I came to myself. Even though I hadn't messed up my credit, I realized, wow, I'm in debt. And so I had to dig myself out of it. So that's part of what I talk about in my book, like what Mm -hmm. I went through and how I came to this point. So based upon my experience, I wanted to help other people not have to go through what I've gone through and the pitfalls, but definitely you can get credit early as long as you're educated, and that's the key, to be educated. Some people aren't even educated on what credit is. What does it even mean? What is a credit card? What is expected? There's not a lot of education. So that's really my call is to educate Mm -hmm. on how you can get to a place where you can establish credit and keep good credit. Not that you have to hit the wall many times before you learn what's the best way, but that you can do it right the first time. I love that. I love that. And it's so needed and so necessary. I so wish there was a just a standard curriculum in schools Absolutely. to talk about finances and get kids early because kids tend to do what their parents do in many cases. Uh, and it's funny because my family, we are perfectly split. My daughter has my financial ethics. My son is like, whoa, <laughs> through his fingers like a dad, right? So, and I remember my, 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 my husband tells my son all the time, he says, Colin, if your mama was not here, like I will, you either need to get somebody like your mom mm-hmm. who can get you, who can corral you, or you got to figure this out because you can't do what I did. This is not a good, not a good practice, right? right? Absolutely. So, and sometimes we have to learn the hard way, and that's, that's kind of unfortunate because the time that we really need credit will be in a bad situation if we haven't learned. And then we'll yeah. be seeing people go to try and get a car and get a house and not understanding what score they even need. So it's mm-hmm. really, really important for people to just be educated and also as you're talking about Teach your children very early, you know? Yes. It's very important so they won't go down a road where they'll have difficulties as they go on in life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we could, uh, there's so many, but there's a lot of other questions that I could ask. And I know there's a lot of questions that other people probably have, but that's why you're on here just to plant the seed. And so I want you to now tell people a little bit more about how to contact you, how to get your book, um, and just so how they can get on this path to better credit. And great credit. Right. You can reach me at, it's all about the three digits, the number three digits.com. And there's no apostrophe in it. So it's all about the three digits.com. Or you can reach me by email at info at the three digits.com. And um, you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram. And I have all the information that you need in order to get yourself in the place that you want to as far as your credit is concerned. I love it. And where do they get your book? Where is your book available? On my website. It is available on my website. Yep. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right. And let me say, they can get the book in um, either paperback, ebook, and then I also have a companion workbook. And that workbook helps you to chart your progress as you go through the restoration process. Then you can chart your actual progress. So I think that's really a good thing in order to help you know where you're at. And very soon I'll be um, launching a credit course where a person can actually go through the course, which will help them. And in the course, there's a lot more nuggets and meat than I could put in the book. I wanted the book to be um, really user-friendly and easy to read, not really, really mm-hmm. yeah. So it gives you the, um, you know, great information on what you can do to restore your credit, but the course is going to take it to another level. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So if people want to know when that course is available, I know I was on your site and there's a place for people to sign up to receive yep. your blog. So if you capture their email address, you'll be able to let them know. Right. when that course is available. So that's fantastic. Well, Jackie, thank you so, so much for being my special guest on the World According to Christy podcast. You're and so I thank all of you. Thank you. And I thank all of you for listening. Uh, 
be sure to subscribe so that you get notification of every episode. I'm here every week. Uh, again, again, some episodes you'll see and others you'll hear. Uh, so I am looking forward to seeing you next week. I am doing what I love, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the World According to Christy podcast. If you're ready to increase your confidence, increase your faith, and conquer your fears, visit faithtoconquerfear.com to schedule a free strategy session with Christy. Thank you for listening to the World According to Christy podcast. Remember to subscribe to ensure you receive updates on upcoming episodes. Check out free resources to help you increase your faith, increase your confidence, and conquer your fears at faithtoconquerfear.com.